Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 108. Floor 108 will have you facing off against Melissa. Melissa, at the start of the battle and during each of her ultimates, Blood Bloom will target the highest health ally on your team first. That character will be inflicted with Bloody Curse, which is a unique debuff. It states, at the start of the turn, the target attacks the enemy who inflicted this debuff with a basic skill. Essentially, the person that has Bloody Curse is permanently provoked until you get rid of it. The target receives all damage in place of the enemy who inflicted this debuff. So essentially, Melissa takes zero damage as long as someone on your team has Bloody Curse. Instead, any damage you inflict to Melissa, well, that's going to be inflicted to whatever your highest health hero is that has Bloody Curse. Don't worry, there is an additional add that you can attach so that, that way you can kind of focus that thing down while you work on getting Bloody Curse resolved. So whatever your frontliner is, Roz, Brig, whatever you want to play, there is a way for you to save them so that that way they don't die. Bloody Curse is dispelled after an ally uses the fifth non-attack skill since it's inflicted. So how the floor is supposed to work is you're supposed to use a lot of non-attack skills to save whatever your tank is so you don't kill them because if you try to burst down Melissa, well, then you end up killing your own tank. The thing is, we're not going to do that here. We're just going to let our tank die because as you can see, when somebody dies with Bloody Curse, it goes away until Blood Bloom is available again, which is four turn cycles. Melissa is made of paper. She is laughably weak. So you could just let your tank die and just blitz her down in like two turn cycles and kill her. She's super easy if you just ignore the floor mechanics and just let your tank die. The actual hard part of this fight is the first floor which is against these two mages, the Wandering Destroyer here, as well as the Wandering Eradicator, and these two Fehemoth Harpies that actually spawn alongside of it. So one of the mages will start with like an AoE stun or an AoE unheal about the start of the fight, and these Harpies take an astronomical amount of turns because of how their kits work. I've had runs where I've only gotten one turn on each character before I became stun locked, and I never got a single turn whatsoever. For that reason... I am playing a team that is incredibly burst damage heavy. I am trying to, on the first floor, kill one of the adds right off the rip. If I don't get it, then I'm going to restart. If you can make it past the first floor with the team I'm going to show you, Melissa is incredibly trivial, super easy. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing now. Adventurer Raz is going to be our tank because, well, he's the best one in all of Abyss. Arius here on the artifact. Health percentage on the necklace, health percentage on the ring, boots are speed. The main reason we're using him is because of command strike. It makes the first floor trivially easy. After that point, we don't really care what he does because he's going to be provoke locked and eventually die. So he's basically here just for command strike. If you want to play Brig or whatever have you in the same spot, you're more than welcome to do so. For our healer, we're playing Tamarin because, well, she does it all, right? Best overall soul weaver probably in Epic 7 for PvE. Main reason we're playing her is because once we're in idle mode, we get a guaranteed dual attack with whatever our main damage dealer is. Uh, obviously, you want plus 7 on Song of the Forest, plus 1 on Shining Star. Boots are speed, health percentage on the ring, health percentage on the necklace. And then I have Wanderer's Potion Ball here, but you can play whatever you want as the artifact. Next up is Camilla, who is a freely available character that you can use and get from Connections. The main reason we are playing Camilla here is because... S2 here, Tactical Maneuver, is a non-attack skill, and after we use it and give her attack buff, S1 Flashing Blade becomes a defense break that is a guaranteed dual attack with your highest attack health hero. She is essentially an extra copy of whatever you want to play as your primary DPS. Daydream Joker can be your artifact if you want it, but honestly, anything works. Speed on the boots, attack percentage on the ring, and critical hit damage here on the necklace. You can play her at level 50, as you can see. That's what I use. It's perfectly fine. The faster you can get Camilla the better. If she has some damage on her, that's also going to be really, really good for you. And then finally, for our main DPS, it's going to be the main girl here, Commander Lorena, probably the best single target PvE damage dealer in the game next to Sermia. I say it all the time. She is on all of the free 6th anniversary dash pass gear. Daydream Joker here as our artifact. Try to get your skill tree awakened if you can. Try to get your skills leveled up if you can. It'll help with the damage overall. Essentially, how our team kind of pans out when you look at it is Roz is another copy of Lorena, Tamarin is another copy of Lorena, Camilla is another copy of Lorena, and then we have Lorena. So we're basically just playing four Lorenas, and we're just going to blitz everything down. Got it? 
Good. Let's get started. All right, I said it in the introduction, but I'm going to reiterate it here. This first floor sucks. It's way harder than the actual boss fight, in my opinion. If you do not get a defense break with either Camilla or Raz on their very first turn, just restart. Save yourself the headache. And then we S2 here, even without the soul burn, we have to kill this. There's one attack, two attacks, three attacks, and we didn't get a lucky uh, extra attack on the enemies there. If they manage to take extra turns, you'll see it. The harpies and these guys just suck, because they could just have a chance of taking an extra turn, and that's just really not something I want to deal with. We're going to try and work on this mage, get this mage down. We can soul burn here to guarantee this. Alright, so the mages are gone, and now we work on the harpies. And there you can see, just she just takes an extra turn. Look, she has ultimate ready to go again. Same thing. I'm just going to fish here for this. Normally, I would save the soul burn, but things have to die. And we kill that harpy. And now we're in the driver's seat at this point. We can wait for our cooldowns to come back. We've basically won this floor. Don't have to worry too much. We could S3 here because Roz is going to die immediately on the next floor, so who cares about his cooldowns? But we want to save everyone else, basically. Takes an extra turn. We could just do this. Keep all of our cooldowns for our other characters. My spear will protect everyone. I'm scared. I'll protect you. Yeah. Let me demonstrate. There's our defense break finally. Well, Lorena is sadly stunned. All right. Fine. Let's do this. You can't close your eyes. Stay calm and think rationally. Should we get started? Yeah. I yes. And then Lorena picks up the kill here. And now we go into Melissa. I will not fall victim to despair. I will have my revenge. And so there's the bloody curse. So we're just gonna idle mode. Push up here. You see he took that damage. We're gonna soul burn here. To guarantee a defense break. And you can see, we instantly killed Roz, right? But it's okay. We're just going to soul burn here. Like I said, Melissa is laughably weak. Alright, we could just hit here. Sadly, the defense, the uh, stun here kind of ruins us. Alright, we can skill three here. Or I should say skill two, push up. Let me demonstrate. We can soul burn here. Let's fight together. You can't close your eyes. Back Melissa. What a waste of time. You've got a long way to go, kid. Alright, and then we can go S1 here. I'm ready. And then just S1 again. Easy. See? Told you. It's pretty easy. Only thing you really have to worry about whatsoever for Abyss Floor 108 is that first floor. That first floor is nightmarish. This floor, just let your tank die. Blitz it down with Commander Larina. Super free, super easy. So again, that's Abyss Floor 108 in a nutshell. If you have any questions, as always, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you have other teams aside from this one that you had success with, let other players know down in the comments below. I know that Taranor Guard 
is a very popular substitution for Commander Lorena. But I wanted to stick with Commander Lorena because I already have her invested in uh, on this account. So if you have Tyrant Regard, feel free to use him. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you all in Abyss Floor 109. Later now.